particles like these so fast and cool. Bombs out of mechanics and pipe up some cold words But no one can deny the fact that on the theory works I'm sure most of you would have seen one of these before. This is a meme. And if you're wondering how it's possible that I found a meme about a levitating train or how long it took me to find that, I actually made this one myself. I'm quite proud. I can now make memes. And this is one that I quickly made. It actually takes two seconds, which is quite good. So um, yeah, this is one I made, and it just simply says, one does not simply make a train levitate, which is actually, in this case, is actually half correct and half not correct. And we also, that's what we have to talk about in this video, how it is how it's possible to make a train a lev levitate, especially a maglev train. Because the dot point itself says, gather and process information to describe how superconductors and the effects of magnetic fields have been applied to develop a maglev train. Right? So you have to actually be able to describe how this is possible, how we can make a train levitate. And we're going to show that it's actually relatively simple on one hand and not that simple on the other hand. So we have our conventional currents, uh, conventional currents, conventional trains. We have our conventional trains which run on tracks. These are the tracks. And obviously you're going to have friction being produced behind, between these wheel, wheels. And you're going to have just normal kind of movement. Whereas maglev trains, which are the ones we have to talk about, are quite different. In this case, mag comes from magnetic. And lev comes from levitation. So as you could guess, magnetic levitation, that means that these trains use magnetic levitation to be able to move from one place to the next. So they're not using any direct tracks, they're, they're not on contact, they're not in contact, they're almost hovering, they're levitating. But they're, it's actually possible to make these trains nowadays, and they work quite well. Right, so this is what we've discussed, how we can do this, how we can make such a train that doesn't run on normal tracks, on conventional tracks. And there's two parts to it. There's the levitation part, and then it's the propulsion part. Levitation means actually coming off, so being, a, being able to just hover. And propulsion means going from one place next, so going from point A to point B, and how that's possible. Right, so these maglev trains you need to be able to both levitate and propel each other to get actually to get from, from distance A to distance B. Now, the actual paranoid parrot might be asking levitating trains what happens if it stops levitating, right? It's obviously quite paranoid. It'd be bad if this train actually collapses and falls on top of each other. But it's good because this is actually, this question is a good question, but overall, the, the paranoid pair doesn't have to be too worried because first of all, we have a magnetic repulsion happening between the, the actual different magnets. They also use electromagnets, which means that they're quite safe and powerful. It's misspelled magnets, that's my bad. And also, so magnetic repulsion, that's how we can actually have levitation happening, that's quite safe. And even if they do fall, even if this train does fall, it's not going to be like a 10, a 10 kilometer fall, it's going to be like a couple of centimeters. So they, that, they, did have, they did design it to make sure it doesn't break once you just fall that tiny bit. So even if does, this does fall, it's quite safe. Overall, nothing to be worried about in general. Right? But we do have to talk about how it's actually possible for this actual train to levitate. Right, so we have two electromagnets, and we're going to cover the electromagnets now. So we need to know what a electromagnet made out of a superconducting material is. But only really for this dot point, and you don't need to know, you don't need to know details of it either. Right, so this would be your solenoid, and you would have covered your solenoid in year 11 physics. It's simply an iron core. Right, so the iron core here, and the iron core is not the superconductor. Your superconductor is actually the wire. So the wire that is wrapped around it, in this case it says nibium tin alloy, and that's a type 2 superconductor. Remember we use type 2 for magnetic properties because they have a higher um, magnetic field tolerance. And these magnetic field wires, or these two superconducting wires, what they do is they will help produce a very strong magnetic field. And the reason why they will produce a really strong magnetic field is because in a superconducting wire, the current that will flow will have no resistance which means you can crank up the voltage, you can make lots of uh, electricity flow, you're not going to produce any heat because there's going to be no resistance, and all that current will be turned into a magnetic field because moving current will produce a magnetic field. All right? So the wire which is wrapped around the solenoid will be producing your magnetic field, and the wire itself is made up of superconductor because the superconductor itself is 
has no resistance, which means it ha can make a really strong magnetic field. And this would be a, the example of a train, and we have your superconducting coils here, so what I have here would be down there. And obviously we also need to have cooling agents. Some trains would use liquid nitrogen depending on the actual superconductor they use, or liquid helium if it's a different superconductor. But they need to have a cooling agent and they need to have your magnetic electromagnets for repulsion as well. Some use normal magnets, but it's often electromagnets. Alright, so the idea would be to have, let's say we have, these are the tracks, these are the tracks here. And these are our maglev trains. And the principle for levitation is relatively straightforward. We have electromagnets, superconducting electromagnets on the train. And we have either normal electromagnets or superconducting elect electromagnets on tracks, often normal electromagnets. And what happened is we're going to have a actual force being produced. And again, this is going to cancel it out like the Meissner effect. And thereby produce levitation. So the north and north repel. That means we have levitation. And that's how levitation is produced. So it's relatively straightforward. You simply have nor north or south south and south south on the tracks. Or you have north north on the train and north north on the tracks. Basically light like poles. You have gonna have light like poles. These are gonna repel each other. And this is the version of how Japan, for example, does it at the moment, how Japan produces its maglev trains. The repulsion makes sure that this levitation occurs. And that's the first part. And but you should also know there's also magnets on the sides. So you're gonna see these side magnets. It's gonna be side magnets here as well, both on the tracks and on the train as well. There's gonna be some side magnets. And that's the one we're gonna talk about next, how the, what these side magnets do. Right, so first one are on the tracks and bottom of the tracks, that, that help for levitation. The side tracks, the ones on the side, will help for propulsion. So here we've got the side tracks, right? So again, these are the same ones, these are these ones here, and they will help with the propulsion part of it. So we've got, in this case, we have alternating ones, so you can see we have north, and then we have south, and then we have north again, so they're alternating. We have them on both sides, and we're going to talk about why they're on both sides well in a second. But what's going to happen is the actual train will have these side magnets, a couple of them, and the tracks will also have these side magnets. Right? So these tracks here are these tracks here, and what's going to happen is for example, as it moves past, it wants to move in this direction, right? It's moving in this direction, or wants to move in this direction. So what's going to happen is you're going to have your south and your north being attracted, right? So your north and your south are attracted. So your north and your south will come together. So here we have attraction. Whereas here, between south and south, we have repulsion, right? Between south and south, we have repulsion. So gray is repulsion, and white is attraction. So we have a repulsion attraction, repulsion attraction. It's basically that kind of system. And same thing happened on the other side. North and south, they repel. Sorry, they attract. North and south attract. And then north, north repel. And north and south attract. And south and south repel. A gray is repel and white is tracked. Like poles attract, uh, unlike poles attract and like poles repel. So what's happening here is these trains are, so if we have attraction, right? Attraction means the train will be attracted, so it will go a tiny bit more this way. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to make sure that the magnets which are here, that the ones which are in the direction of the, that they want to go into, that they're actually dragging them forward. They're pushing them forward on both sides, right? Both this one here and this one, they're pushing them forward. But once they got past the next magnet, so this magnet here, south, it's repelling it. So that means it's also making sure that it's moving in that direction. Right? It's repelling it, which means it's making sure it's not going backwards. If we were attracting, it would be going backwards, but because it's repelling, it's also going forward. Right? Same with this one here. These two make sure it's going forward because of attraction. These two are making sure it goes forward because of, a, of repulsion. And so we've got attraction, repulsion here. Same thing here. Repulsion will make sure that the north won't go back because it will stay away from the north. It will go this way. It'll make, in this case, attraction will make sure that it will go from again this way and repulsion will make sure it will go this way. So what we're having is we're having a one-way traffic always in this direction 
And what you need to know is once it moves past one, what has to happen is you actually have to have switching of magnets, right? So now we have, let's say we move one magnet. All this repulsion attraction has allowed us to move one magnet. But what has to happen for it to work for the long run, for it to actually be able to move for not just a centimeter, but for millions of meters, is once it moves one magnet, then the actual magnets have to change. Because what would happen now is we've just moved from one, what would happen now is we have south and south, and these ones would obviously repel, right? So these would repel, and north and south would, at would be attract, these would attract. What that would mean is now it's going backwards. So now these are repelling each other, it's going backwards, and these are attracting each other, it's going backwards. So unless we change it, we would have it going forward and then going backward. It would be going back and forth the whole time. But if we change it, if we change the actual magnets, let's say we make this one a, a north, north, and north, and the other ones make south, south, south. Again, just imagine red is meant to be south, and blue is meant to be changing them all. I'm just going to change one side, right? So we have, did I mess it up? I have, I forgot to, oh, I should, the actual, on the train, sorry, the ones on the train don't change, that's important. So the ones on the train don't change, the train stay the same, whereas the ones on the track, they change. Whenever it gets past one, the track ones change. Because now what happens, let's say this one is not south, it's meant to be north, so it's meant to be north. It's going to be a bit messy, this one's going to be south, this one's north, this one's south. So now, because of that changing, we have north and south attracting, right? So here we have attraction occurring between these ones, and we have repulsion occurring between south and south. And we would have attraction occurring between north and south, and repulsion occurring between north and north. So now it's all good again, it's going to go that one way, right? So it's going to go straight the one way we want it to go. All of these will make sure it goes in the direction that it's meant to go. Whereas beforehand, they would have gone backwards. And the same would happen on the other side. And the reason why it happens on both sides equally is obviously if you have a stronger magnetic field on one side than on the other side, what would happen is it would tilt towards the side that was stronger, right? It would go towards that side. But we don't want that to happen. So we have both equal size strengths, magnetic fields on both sides. And that's how a propulsion occurs. A propulsion is how it moves. How it moves. And we have levitation being how it hovers. And it has to do both these for it to be able to actually get from distance A to distance B, to, to cover that distance. And the next question would be, which is something our philosoph philosophical raptor is asking, if levitating trains are so awesome, why have we never been in one, right? So if they're really that amazing, why have we never seen one or been in one? And the reason why is, yes, they are a crate. I mean, they're pretty impressive. But the problem is, first of all, they're quite expensive. Right? So it's really expensive to use the liquid nitrogen or liquid helium to cool. Right? So we need to cool the actual supermagnets, the superconducting supermagnets. So we need to cool them, and that's quite expensive. And often what we do is we only cool the ones on the actual train, we don't we use normal magnets or electromagnets for the tracks because it would be really expensive to cool the whole track. It's less expensive to cool just the ones on the train. Right, so it would be really expensive and also the technology which is required is quite advanced which is why countries like Japan and Germany, they already have a couple of them but other countries are still lagging behind. But like overall because it's so expensive and the technology is so advanced we don't see many of them, and most of you would not have been, maybe some of you would have been, but most of you would not have been in one of these maglev trains. Probably in the future, we'll be in more, as soon as, especially as we get better superconductors, but at the moment, we're still using mostly the conventional trains. I'll go over the open again, it says, gather and process information to describe how superconductors and the effects of magnetic fields have been applied to develop the maglev train. As the magnetic fields are all these lines that I drew earlier, and I said that repulsion, uh, sorry, levitation, that's so how it hovers, is achieved by having like repel like. We have electromagnets made of superconductors in the actual train. We have normal electromagnets on the tracks, and they're repelling each other, which means we have hovering happening. That's levitation. And propulsion was where we have your constantly, these are constantly switching. So these are switching, these magnets. 
whenever something moves past one, they switch around to make sure that we have a one-way direction occurring. And that's to to not like attracting um, unlike attracting unlike and like repelling alike. They use those properties, those those known facts, to make the train actually move by making these ones on the side switch, whereas the ones on the train will stay the same the whole time. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.